If you were doing something that you know was wrong, you're already in sin. Coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to say, He's here to set the captives free. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Not God, He's a lion, the lion of Judah. He's a roaring with power in fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Well, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop? Come on, let's sing it out. Well, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? There is no one like you. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? The Lion of Judah, He's a roaring with power, in fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain, for the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb, every knee will bow before Him. Lift up some praise to God this morning.
death that he had to know the power of your mind was your love but you laid down your life and blood and water flow was your love what's it out for see that being defeated I love with the vengeance came the victory is won But you tread across the raging seas But the chasm of the grave Was the greatest stride you take The victory is won Was your love a holy fury coming from the heights of heaven's throne? Was your love? Was your love? It was your love. It was your love. This is your love. defeated I love with the vengeance king the victory is won but you tread across the raging sea but the chasm of our grave the greatest stride you take the victory is won How many here have victory in Jesus? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, the victory is won.
and I am a sister of this house in that I call this my home and I serve here and I tithe here this is my home I have the privilege of bringing you the message this morning and 
we uh, moved to this area when my daughter was in the ninth grade. Uh, she attended Connellsville Area High School in the ninth grade. And she heard on the announcements, when they were giving the announcements at the end of the day, she came home with the most wonderful news. Most wonderful news. She said, Mom, Connellsville High School has a dual enrollment program with Penn State. You can go there and take classes free of charge if you're a student at the high school. Wow. So she went and investigated that. Ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th, my daughter took classes at Penn State, including the books free of charge. Now, there were certain courses she was not allowed to take, but many courses she was. And that did add up into, um, you know, credits, thank you, credits for college. I say that to say this. I said all that to say this. That's exactly how City Church operates. We have announcements up here like Crystal just did. That's where you get the information. I run into moms even today. My daughter's been, uh, she graduated in 2011, and I run into moms to this day, and I tell them about that program, and they say this. I didn't know. Well, your child did not hear and take heed to the announcements. So I'm saying it again. City Church announces things through the um, announcing during the uh, morning service and through your bulletins. And I am telling you, just like the person who did not hear that and is letting that awesome opportunity pass them by, so be it you could be, say you could be, missing opportunity here. Again, through the announcements and the um, uh, bulletin. Um, and with that being said, I wanted to let you know right now, it's been announced as she just did, um, I'm encouraging you to the best of my ability to let you know that the foundations class, in my, in my opinion, is just that, foundational. When you, become a, when you become a Christian and new into that, you have just started to live. You have just come into glory. Can't we say that? You have just come into something awesome. And we here at City Church want you to be founded and know how to pull on heaven and know how to continue the walk with Christ. As she said, that class um, is $25. You go to the bookstore, you get the material. With that material, may I brag a little bit about Papa Brian? He's not here, so I can uh, brag on Pastor Brian. He has, in fact, uh, written a book. That is part of the class. Um, it is part of the teaching, so you, in fact, do get that book. If you happen to have that book, it comes with your material. That would be a good opportunity to give that to somebody. I'm just saying that. So um, if you would put, please put up this picture I wanted to show you. Oh, that's a foundation class a couple years ago. Don't I look good in that dress? I'm just saying. And as we can see, Joey there all cheesing and smiling. Look at that. I think I counted 23 people. That track. I want to show you this picture for a reason. Of course, show you how awesome we all look. But really, look what we have in our hands. That's called our certificate. So you're telling me that you, I'm telling you, you take a college course here at City Church, you go up and you have this foundational class, and then you get a certificate afterwards. And that is awesome because, you know, we all grow in the Lord. And I loved, absolutely loved, absolutely loved when I was in that class telling people, I'm taking a course. I'm taking a college course at City Church. So again, jump in that class. Two classes have been, I believe it's three sessions. They do 10 class each session, so it takes about a year for us to get uh, that completed. If you miss, and you happen to be computer savvy, some of us are, some of us aren't, Hallelujah. you can actually take that class you missed online, so that might pique your interest. But again, I wanted to show you that class, how exciting it was, and I, again, that is, I can't be more clear in saying that it is that information is given during announcements and in your bulletin. Second thing I want to talk to you about before we continue is this. <clears throat> I love when I have the mic in my hand. You have to listen. Yeah, you can take that down. No, I'm not. I'm done with that. Um, the second thing I want to talk to, as you can see, we are growing. We're going um, number-wise. Um, God said where there's two or three gathered together, so is his presence. But he also promised City Church that he was going to increase the discipleship here. And as you do know, we're growing. And I'm going to talk to you about something very serious um, in that if you are wanting to, 
serve here at City Church and haven't yet, please um, think about that and, pat, and get into that. We have, as you know, when you walk in, you're greeted. You're handed a bulletin and you're greeted by a team of people, and that is called greeting. And then you come in and you have the cafe. Then you have a group called the guide. And what the guide does, they give tours to the church. I want you to feel at home. How can you feel at home if you don't know where any room is but this one? So they give tours. They make sure you get material in your hand. They are, in fact, the person you go to for questions. I have what we call the bookstores. You've been just told. You go and pay. You go in. There's books there. There's Pastor Brian's books. There's books when he mentions. If you want to get, yeah, I'm going to go on attention here. When you want to um, tap into what Christ is doing at City Church, listen to the pastor. He'll mention a book. We'll make sure we have that. That is always then available at the bookstore. We have Kids Church. You just saw all the kids take off. Well, somebody needs to teach them hallelujah. We have the nursery. Anybody under the age of three gets watched. That's our team. We have ushers. Right now, I believe there are, yep, that's all I'm going to say about that. They would love for you to be on their team. And, yes, I'm promoting that because my husband is on that team. <laughs> he said, promote the ushers. Um, and also the sound booth. Wave up there, the sound booth. I know we see your tops of your heads, but yes. So, again, it is not... Um, I'm not trying to sour your stomach. I'm trying to prick your heart. I'm not trying to sour your stomach. I'm trying to prick your heart and saying, come into servant. Come into calling this your home by serving. It's minimal what you have to do. The teams are rather large. I think um, the nursery, I'm there one time a month, I believe. So it's not real strenuous. And you always, uh, depending on what team you're on, you can obviously come into the service then and not miss anything. So praise God about that. So let's go into the service. Let's go into the sermon, excuse me. I had a dream about a month ago, and I'd like to share it with you. I did share it with a friend probably the next day, briefed on it, and um, I believe the Lord wanted me to talk, to, uh, share that with her. But today, I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share it with you. Before even hearing my dream, we must agree that it's up, not up for our debate. After all, it is just a dream. The title of my story, or my sermon, is called Controversial Issues. Controversial, intense public argument, issues, an important topic or problem for debate or discussion. The Lord woke me up about 2.30 in the morning, about almost to the day a month ago, he woke me up, and I sat up on the side of the bed, and although I was cautious enough to hear my papa's voice, I, I wasn't cautious enough to be awake. I, I came to the side of the bed, and I turned around, and I have pencil and paper there because I know Papa God sometimes talks to me at night. That's a good place to, to be in the Lord when, in the night when you're sleeping. And I had this pencil and paper, and I pick up this pencil and paper, and I write... And only the next morning when I woke up to find out that it was more than a dream, that the Holy Spirit had visited me and that I did, in fact, um, write these things down. So only when I woke up did I see that the Holy Spirit had visited me. Again, the title of my message is Controversial Issues. The Holy Spirit said to me, write this down, Santa Claus. And so I did. Halloween, and in parentheses, he put pagan influenced. Pagan, a person holding religion beliefs other than those of the main world religions. And so I wrote it down. Once saved, always saved. So I wrote it down. Cigarettes. And so I did. Alcohol, moonshine, and so I wrote it down. Tithing, and so I did. Homosexual, a person sexually attracted to a person of the same sex, and so I did write it down. Marijuana, dope, drugs, and so I did write it down. 
women wearing pants. And so I wrote it down. Women preaching. And so I wrote it down. Eating pig, which has split hoofs, but does not chew its cud. And so I wrote it down. Eating rabbit, it chews the cud, but it does not have a split hoof. And so I wrote it down. He showed me that those words standing by themselves are not controversial. It's when man meets man and they hit, it becomes very controversial. Because if a man speaks with God, it is not controversial because God is all-loving, all-knowing, all-knowledgeable, always will, always was, and always will be. There's no argument. It can't be controversial when you are in conversation with Christ, don't you know? But when you have an issue and you come together, it's like the storm. He showed me in my dream hot weather and cold weather, and it's just hot weather and it's just cold weather, but when it hits, it becomes a storm. Don't you know? Don't you know when these words meet a, a man on a man, you know, I'm talking a person to a person, that's when it could have a tendency to be controversial or very controversial. In my dream, he allowed me to see the demon of lust. It was underneath the table of these controversial subjects. It was underneath. I'm going to say it again. It was low. The demon of lust is low. Someone needs to hear that. The demon of lust is low, and he is hungry, and he lusts for anything and everything. He is ready to devour. He is under the table of this conversation, and his tongue was large, and it was wet, and it was slimy, and there was a desire for the conversation to happen incorrectly. And he, his tongue is large. I'm telling you, I saw it. I feared not because I was with Christ, but I saw it. And his tongue was so large that it swept the earth. There was no, no place that it couldn't go. And he was just waiting for the conversations to take incorrect places. Incorrect conversation, don't you see? A demon of lust was not a lust that comes upon me or you on a, on a given time, and we have to pray that away. It wasn't a lust that was mild. I saw it in its entirety, and I'm telling you, he is craving. He, as in, he, as in the demon of lust, is craving for us to drop that he can lap up. But remember again, as scary as that sounds, I'm going to say it again. He was low. See, God's high. He was low. And the Holy Spirit said, Cheryl, that's what he calls me. He calls me Cheryl. He calls you by your name. He knows you. Whether you submit to him or you do not submit to him, the DNA in you is he. He knows your name. Put your hand on your chest and say, he knows my name. Yeah, someone needs to know that. Sometimes you allow, I'm going to say, oh, come on, somebody. I'm preaching now. Sometimes you allow the distance between you because God doesn't move. Let's be real clear. If something's not going right, it's not him. If somebody shifted, it's not him. He knows your name. Pause right there, because I want somebody to really think about that for a minute. He knows my name. So he called me Cheryl. He said, Cheryl.
back in the dream. And he said, Cheryl, if you were doing something that you know was wrong, you're already in sin. sermon's over. We can all go home. This is the word that I'm bringing today. This is the word that I'm bringing today. If you are doing something that you know is wrong, you're already in sin. Oh, I'm getting sour stomachs over here. Let's go over here. You can even let this pierce your heart and go home greater than you came, or you can get Pepto-Bismol afterwards. I'm delivering the word. I'm telling you, if you, I'll be kind to you today. If she, he said, Cheryl, if you were doing something that you know is wrong, you are already in sin. Oh, somebody needs to say amen. I'm not getting off this subject till I, I see that you get the word that's delivered today. Passionately as I can say it. If you were doing something that you know is wrong, you were already in sin. I don't mind exposing myself when I when I um, preach. That's how we learn. It just shows that I'm human. I want to tell you a little bit about a subject that, um, and this, uh, you know, if I'm thinking it, you're thinking it, if you will. No, I want to rephrase that. Not necessarily how I think. If I've gone through it, you've probably gone through it. How's that? Yeah. When I um, started dating my husband, his family was very generous, if you will, with alcohol consumption. They introduced me to a um, drink, it was called, it's called Moonshine. And um, I, at that point in my life, offense or no offense, I'm not trying to anything, I wasn't, I just never was exposed to that. And they were generous with it. Do you understand, when you went to their home at Christmas, they had taken, please don't learn from this, this isn't something I'm, pro <laughs> this is not something I'm promoting. They would take, uh, if you will, those uh, fruits or cherries, and they'd put it in this alcohol and soak all year so then they can give that to you. That was a present to you. And what I didn't realize was happening, I didn't realize what was happening, I took that as a code of honor. Like, that's my husband's family. I'm going to wear that as a code of honor. If you offer me that, I'll as much as even buy that. I'll much as even give it to you as a present. It is acceptable to me. Until recently, I had a friend that said, not really to me, but in a conversation that I, I took heed to it. How can you take something that's illegal? I know you could buy moonshine, they told me, at the store. I'm not talking about that moonshine. How can you take something illegal and call it legal and call it Christ and, and, and do that? I don't know. I'm going to go ask Holy Spirit. Bam! First time, I'm 55. Yeah, we'll cut that out. Uh, yeah, that TV program doesn't need to hear all that. Thank you. Um, I finally asked the Holy Spirit his opinion. I asked him his opinion, and I said, Holy Spirit, yeah, I, that is a, um, something that I would drink if it was there. And, yes, I have bought it, and I have um, given it as Christmas presents, and I didn't buy it at the liquor store either, so hence not uh, legal. And he said to me, well, it is illegal, and if you get caught, you will be arrested. I didn't think about that. Yeah, you didn't ask me, the Holy Spirit said. And then he said it. He's gentle. Remember when the, the prostitute was being accused and she got thrown and, and they wanted to kill her, and, and Jesus was gentle? He's gentle. You know what he said to me? He said, Cheryl, I want you to ask me what type of toothpaste to use. Yeah, really? Yeah, really. I love you that much. I want what's exactly best for you. I have a friend here, a sister in the house I'm friends with, and she is allergic to fluoride. So that would be great. The Holy Spirit told her don't use this kind of the fluoride. He loves you that much. 
Ah, uh, someone's going to hear us or they're not. You're either going to get a stomach ache or you're going to let it pierce your heart. He wants to be your all in all. He wants you to set a place at the dinner table. He wants you, oh, uh, come on, somebody. He wants you to put a seatbelt beside you when you're driving alone because he's there with you. He does not leave you or forsake you. I never asked him. I'll let you chew on that. I won't tell you why because you have the same things. Don't take my pacifier. Why would you ask him? I never asked him, but he answered it. I want to be your all in all. I want your highest and your best. I want you to be my best friend. I want to partner with you. I don't want to drag you into the kingdom. I want you to walk into the kingdom. I want you to have awesome things. I want you to be willing to pass me on and introduce me to other people. I want to be asked what kind of toothpaste to use. Mm. We're going to talk about Galatians, so if you want to get your Bibles out or your means of Bible, Galatians. Just giving the Holy Spirit opportunity. Do we all agree? I listen. People are praying that this um, is heartfelt, that it's received. Those, those times of hesitation is just listening and tapping into Christ, don't you know? In Galatians, Paul wrote a, a letter, and he proclaimed that Christians are free from the strongholds of sin. I'll say that again. Paul proclaimed that Christians are free from the strongholds of sin. I'm going to be going into the, I use the King James Version, the New King James Version, Galatians 5, 16. You'll get that up there, please. And we're going to read this together. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I believe today's sermon is directed towards us experiencing this, not just reading it. I believe if you choose to hear and choose to allow it in your heart, I believe you are going to experience this this morning. These words alone do not produce argument. It's when someone does not seek God's opinion, but man's. Santa Claus, Halloween, once saved, always saved. Cigarettes, alcohol, tithing, homosexual, marijuana, dope, and drugs. Women wearing pants, women preaching, eating pig, eating rabbit. Here at City Church, we do not separate Jesus from love. We do not turn our back on biblical truth. You're not going to come up in this house and have us persuaded into believing what you are walking in is biblical. We won't do it. You're not going to come up to this house and say, but. You're not going to do it. We will not turn our back to biblical truth. We will not do it. And if you try to separate Jesus from love, you can't. They are equal to each other. My daughter, I could talk about my daughter. She's not here. She lives in Savannah, Georgia, praise God. Uh, not that she lives in Savannah, Georgia, away from me. I'm not praising God about that. Well, okay, sometimes. Love you, Joni. 
Um, but the Lord's blessed me with one daughter, and her name is Joni, J-O-N-I, Joni. There's two times in Joni's life that I remember very clearly she accused me, her mother, of lying to her. She was in kindergarten, and she had that day learned the vowel sounds, the long vowel signs, A-E-I-O-U, E, I. And she came home, and she said, after throwing the book bag and being, I mean, she had me on her mind all day. She said, why did you lie to me? Why did you spell my name J-O-N-I? Can't you hear the E, Joan E? It should be an E. Far be it, I tried to, to teach her a common noun, but she wouldn't, you know, hear of that. Oh, not a common noun, a proper noun. Thank you, proper noun. She wasn't ready to hear that, and I wasn't the teacher, so I was exempt from teaching or anything. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. Kindergarten. Don't teach me nothing. So she was literally upset for two years. Kindergarten and first grade, my daughter wrote her name, J-O-N-E. And she told anybody in her path, my mom lies. I have, I have papers to prove she spelled it J-O-N-E. And then she accused me of lying one time subject to Santa Claus, and that's all I'll say. We have children in the room. She said, how dare you lie to me and tell me something that is that isn't. Well, then I jumped in as a mom and said, well, now wait a minute, because you know this, what's that, seven dwarfs people? What's them? The Snow White, the seven dwarfs. I said, you know, they're not real, but they're magical and they're fun. And she said, and I go on about, you know, Pocahontas. Well, I think Pocahontas is real, actually. Well, anyway, I'm just telling her, yeah, right. I'm just trying to get off that hot spot, man. That girl's red face, she's mad. And I heard her, you lied to me. And she's 26, and she'll tell you she's not over it. That was the day she realized that I was capable of lying, and now she don't know what the truth is. See, I didn't ask Holy Spirit. If I could do it again, I'd say, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to imply or put into my life this um, character of Santa Claus. How, what it, what's your saying of What do you want my household? Because he might say something different to you that he says to you. I'm not here proclaiming that. I'm not here to open that subject up. I'm saying that I lost the opportunity to ask Christ what to do, and I hurt my daughter. I'm saying that you need to take responsibility and ask Christ his opinion. Christ, his opinion. Because you've all met the person, and you know you've met them. Come on, don't even make me go here. They got their coat on. They got their purse under their armpit. <laughs> they got one foot in church and one foot out of the church. They got their car started, ready to run, their toe tapping while they come to you and say, and what do you think about so-and-so, such-and-such? What's your opinion about such? And then they always go even as further and accuse your church. And what does your church think about that? Because my car's running and I got a foot out the door and I'll go if I don't like your answer. Clear as I can say it, get over yourself. We're not going to change biblical truth here at City Church. We're not going to. I'm going to give you the word of Christ so you are very unclear that it is not Cheryl giving you the stomach ache. You're giving yourself the stomach ache because you're not allowing God to penetrate your heart. He came with the word today and said, if you are doing something that you know is wrong, you're already in sin. Do not, do not come up into my house. Do not come up into my house and try to convince me that your sin is 
graced under Christ, that it is a okay thing. Go deal with that. We all deal with things. We all deal with things. I'm going to be arrested. For 55 years, I was buying bootleg moonshine. No, none of my relatives. I'm saying that to say, deal with that. Don't bring that up in the house. Your foot out the door, your car started, your purse under your armpit. You're eager to know the answer because you're going to be ticked. Because I'm doing this, you better say that it's good so that I'm accepted. Because if you say once saved, always saved, that doesn't make sense to me and I'm out the door or vice versa. I saw a church split down the middle. It sickened me. I was 13 years old. And it was a Methodist church. And Satan spoke out of somebody's mouth and said to the pastor, once saved, always saved. Meaning, once I accept Christ, can I live like a heathen and still be saved? And the pastor said what? He felt was foundational. And it split the church down the middle, and my half was the half that went. I was 13. I had no control. My mama pulled us out of that church because she didn't agree what he said. Don't put that on my back. Don't put that on my back. Don't put it on the back of my church. Don't come into this house. I'm not mad. I'm passionate. Don't come in this house. And try to make your sin acceptable to Christ. I'm not going to agree with it. I'm in the same struggle. I'm dealing with things. But don't ask another person. When you are doing something that you know is wrong, you are already in sin. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again. Again, you can make this a sour stomach or you can make it a, a change in your heart. I'm not sure if um, you've come here a while and, or if you've come here a short time, but let me explain something to you. We're called non-denominational in that we are not under sister churches, such as, let's say, Methodists. They have numerous Methodists. They'll have a director. Um, in fact, over here uh, beside Peach and Express is the office to the Methodist church. That's all good stuff. Say Amen. But we are a church that doesn't have that um, um, dictation or direction or correction or influence. Um, our papa of our house, Pastor Brian Higby, goes straight to Holy Spirit. Yep, that was, someone need to hear that too. Mm. We are friends with many people, and Pastor Brian allows them to influence us, us or not influence us. If he goes to a foreign country, he goes first, and he finds the danger or the uh, relationship or what is taking place, and then he will allow us, if you will, to go on to these trips. The Spirit's moving right now. It's not a conviction, he said. It's not a conviction. This isn't pointing at you. This isn't making you squirm. This is bringing you into a position of loving him and talking to him and asking him about situations. This is a time that this church is going to take a step for forward and get closer with Christ. Today's a day to allow you to recognize not what you're doing. If you leave here, that's on you saying that, mm, he gave us a sandwich. No, I did not. I'm telling you, Christ is open-hearted, ready to receive you, ready to befriend you, ready to direct you, ready to talk to you, ready to love you, ready to change your life. Oh, somebody here. He's ready to change your life. He's ready to change your life. He's ready to change your thinking. Thank you. Some of you were so bound where Satan wants you to be bound because what you do, you get in that sin, and then you feel, um, uh, mm, you feel guilty, thank you, Holy Spirit. You feel guilty, you feel guilty, and then you sin that same sin, and then you feel guilty. I'm going to tell you, when you come into Christ and you're ready to ask forgiveness, it's because you want to do a 360, not a, not a 200, you know. You want to do a 360. You don't want to go back there again. 
It's chewing at your ankles because you're letting it. You're allowing it to dominate your life, and you can't think of anything besides that drug you're taking, that poison you're taking, that misunderstanding that you're accepting. Rise above it. Rise above it. Get closer to Christ. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm praying for somebody so hard it makes me almost ill. I am praying, I am praying, and I am praying, and I am fighting a demon, and I'm fighting a demon. And I look over, and I see these eagle It looked like eagle's claws. And I'm like, man. And then I look closer. It was the person that I'm praying for hanging on the demon. I can't pray that away. Pray your own demons away. Start praising the Lord. Put your hands up and say, hallelujah, I'm greater than what goes in my mouth right now. Lord, I know I'm not walking correctly, but that will come too. I'm going to get closer to you so that just falls off. Watch this. It just falls off as you get closer to Christ. It just falls off when you get closer to Christ. You're spending too much time hunting and staying in there and letting it chew you up and letting I see people crying and begging God to take that away they're on their knees even right now I see them and they're begging God to take that away put your hands up praise the Lord I quit praying for that particular person I thought it was a demon and it's the person hanging on to the demon I started saying I see them coming to Christ And I glorify the day that they come here and serve and they love Christ. I start saying hallelujah. I can either believe that everybody in my retron is going to be saved and set free, or I can think the alternative. It is that simple. I said, God, am I to believe? I wrote their names down. Praise God. I'm not bragging. I'm desperate. I had people being saved in my family. I wrote, I almost said my husband's family. Don't put that on there either. (laughs) I wrote down family members. I was into the 200. I mean, we're talking into the fortune. This family's like rabbits up in here. I had to call people to get named. I write them down, and I say, Lord, am I to believe? Am I to believe that those people will be saved? Yes. Will I see it before I die? Maybe, maybe not. But to think otherwise is to tap into somewhere you don't want tapped into. Yep, we are to believe. Okay, I'm going to tell myself now. Whether you befriend me or you haven't, there's one thing I do. I tap into you. I see you. God has given me a gift, um, and I see into. I'll tell you this story to tell you my gift. A woman comes up to the altar, and she said, I don't care if the kids are here, and I was going to say exactly what she said, but I'll pass. No, seriously, I have some kids in here. She came to y'all and she said, pray for my grandson. He's no good. He's me. And the Lord spoke out of my mouth and said, I will not pray for you or grandson, but I'll pray for you. Because your grandfather raped you when you're little. And your grandson reminds you of him. And you have an ill feeling. And right now she falls to the floor and God takes over. And I bet she left different than she came. She then can have a relationship with her grandson. That's called seeing into. So I see into you, and I've been praying, and it's not bad. I'm not forgiving myself for praying into and seeing your, your demons and smelling things at night. Oh, hallelujah, wake up at 2 in the morning, get my shoes on. Kenny said, where are you going? I'm, I'm going to so-and-so. There's a demon chewing at it. And I show up and just, hey, you could take it as bragging, or you could say, wow, God gave her a gift. So I'm going to start tapping into that, but with what is happening and positive. I'm going to look into you and say, did you know that you write books? Did you know that you're greater than you know? Do you know that you're greater than your problem? Do you know that there's anointing on your life and your children's children will come to know Christ because of your diligence? Do you know that you're a teacher? Do you know that you're on the spot that God put? That's what I'm going to do. Because when you raise your hands and start praising God, this isn't in my notes. This is all from God. When you start praising the Lord and tapping into Christ, instead of dwelling in the hardship, they just go. So I pray that anybody who's struggling with addiction or frustration or temper or, oh, let's not cut it off just because, oh, well, you're on the bad, you're on the H word. What's that? Heroin. Oh, that's worse than this. Oh, get over yourself. 
We're all struggling. I'm asking you as a sister to quit struggling. I'm asking you to quit asking and staying in this cycle of a, uh, what's that, a, a tornado. I'm asking you to rise above it and just start raising your hands. Just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe you'll get further away from that and there'll be a day that you don't have that on you and that you can then help another sister or brother. Hallelujah. Yeah, there I go, rabbit trail. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, hey, hey, let's hey, no, talk about rabbit trail. Oh, no, 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 I'm putting you on the pedestal, Carmen. You're being exposed. Um, I spend, just like you, I'm here, do stuff. I'm here throughout the week doing different things, How? whatever. Somehow I missed, I'm going to say it again, somehow I missed that my brother Carmen not only is the worship leader and plays the piano, but he is in a band. I get a hallelujah. Yeah. And he, has, um, he does concerts out and about, and you can get tickets through him. I got tickets given to me because someone couldn't make it. And when I got there, half a city church was there. I'm like, how would you know? Wait a minute. No, you just stay right there. I got some business to take. Where would you get your ticket? How would you know what's going? What's up? No, it is not. Uh, he doesn't announce it as a Christian band, but it is awesome. Um, it was enjoyable. It was to promote their CD and um, for being there, my ticket. I got a CD. Well, I guess I should give the CD to the person that gave me the ticket. Not. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm um, not promoting Carmen, but um, that was interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know where I was going on with that. Ah, wait, focus, Cheryl. Back to focus. I hope this is edited because they take that stuff out, right? No. Um, so anyway, that's back. Where was I? I was saying that we're non-denominational and that we befriended different people and they're very important in Pastor Brian's life and then they become important in our life and they feed into us. They're praying even as we speak. They send words to us all the time um, and you can just say, now she's really nuts, but I don't care really. When it comes to Christ, excuse me of anything you want. I was looking out the window one day up at the office, and I saw Pastor um, Eddie Robertson hovering over City Church in the spirit. And so they do love us. I say that to say this. One of the, the heads of the, the brotherhood, the fatherhood, I, he's the fatherhood, I guess I would call it. And no, this isn't a cult. Some of mine just went there. Stop it. Um, Papa Jack Taylor is the father. We've met him. He's come here at our gathering. Hint. If you have a pen, write that down, gathering. It's coming up. It's coming up in May, gathering. Papa Jack will be there. Um, he um, quoted, he had a, a, some, he preached recently, and his wife quoted it, and it's just too brilliant not to say. If you are seeking something other than the kingdom of God, you are in the suburbs of adultery. Jack Taylor. <laughs> 